Should proceed with the so, next speaker. So our next speaker is from uh, UP Mindanao, uh, Sir John Marks. Hello, Sir Ting. Are you ready? Yes, Sir Ting. Uh, okay, go ahead, please. Go ahead, please. Uh, let me share share screen first. Yes. Is it working, sir? Thing? Yes, sir. We can see your presentation. Thank you. All right. Uh, good, uh, good, good afternoon. Uh, good morning, everyone. So I'm John Mark Sarmiento. I'm from the School of Management, University of the Philippines, Mindanao. So uh, today I'll be presenting to you our research. Uh, output uh, on the role of motorized boats in fishers productivity in marine protected uh, versus non protected areas in Davao Gulf Philippines so i'm uh, i'm an assistant professor at the school of management and this paper is co-authored with uh, Queenie Lin Lee Mendez Leo Manuel Estania Yvette Giray Cleto Naniola and Pedro Alviola so uh, I'm also a PhD candidate at the UWA School of Agriculture and Environment at the University of Western Australia. So this presentation is part of our, one of the outputs of our uh, Chad Dare 2 project on the bioeconomic uh, modeling. So for, for today, uh, let me uh, give you the an, a brief introduction of the importance of the fishery sector in the Philippines. So. Uh, primarily, it's, it has a very key role in terms of livelihood, economy, and nutrition uh, of the Filipino people. And in 2018, it produced around 4.35 million metric tons, and uh, uh, a quarter of this is produced by the municipal fishers. And uh, also, it contributes to our GDP at, uh, at the rate of 3.8 uh, to 5% and that, that's quite huge. And it provides 5% uh, of the total labor force. And most, most, most of these are coming from the municipal fishing sector. And then uh, unfortunately, uh, around 34% of our fishers are considered poor. In fact, they are one of the, one of the uh, poorest sectors uh, in the Philippines. And uh, we also know that fish is one of the cheapest sources of protein for lower income households. Now, there is a trend uh, that, that has been observed in the Philippines, and uh, in particular, it's declining throughout the years. And uh, there was a drop by 33.9%. Uh, if we compare the average of the 2003 to 2011 compared to the latest figure in 2014, and there was also a decrease by 15% if, if we uh, look at our local statistics, that's from 5.25 million metric tons in 2010 to 4.35 million metric tons in 2018. And during the period eight, uh, 1980s and 1990s, there was a very high exploitation rates in our uh, fish species. And uh, in particular cases in Palawan and Central Visayas, there have, there have been observed uh, a decreased uh, fish catch in these areas. Now, what did we do to intervene to this challenge? Uh, we set up the marine protected areas and uh, it's it's in the Philippine Fisheries Code of 1998. And uh, included in that code is the establishment of the farm MCs. And uh, we have been uh, successful with this one with 94% uh, establishment in the municipalities and around 67 among the uh, villages in the coastal areas have established M, uh, farm MCs. And then uh, the, the role, the key role of MPAs is primarily to increase the fish stock, uh, especially after closure season. So uh, in, in this way, it promotes sustainable management of the fishing grounds, uh, particularly during the period when the fish spawns. So, uh, however, there are there are also limitations with the, the marine protected area. And uh, in the literature, we found that uh, 
there, there are uh, limited economic opportunities in MPAs, primarily because uh, uh, firstly, there are closure season and there are restrictions. Secondly, there are restrictions as to the uh, fishing activities in the sites. And, and uh, economic wise, there's a need for the fishers to uh, travel farther fishing, sorry, that's fishing grounds, resulting to increased time and cost expenditure. So this means that uh, there would be a higher ex expense uh, for the fishers operation uh, if they are located to uh, uh, a coastal area with MPAs. Now, in some cases, it actually resulted to lower uh, catch per unit effort or the CPUE. And so uh, we look at the role of the motorized boats in, in the marine uh, protected areas and as well as in the non-marine non protected areas. So uh, with the use of motorized boats, there's an increased fishing trips and uh, which resulted to higher mean weight and higher CPUE. And also uh, with, with motorized boats, uh, fishers can access our uh, more fishing grounds and which resulted to higher CPUE as well. However, there are also uh, disadvantages of the use of motorized boats and uh, Rai and Garada has, uh, has a very good discussion on that one and that includes the damage to fishers net, increased pollution from the diesel fuel and as well as disturbance in the fish uh, spawning grounds and encroachment in, uh, in MPAs or the restricted areas and to some extent overfishing. So there is this negative effect on the fish and wildlife, ha wildlife habitats. So what this research is all about is we assess the effect of the motorized boats and other significant drivers on the level of fish catches in both the MPA and non-MPAs uh, areas. So these are our research uh, sites. We have two research sites in, in Davao Gulf. The first one is Mabini Davao de Oro, that's in the, the first panel, panel A, and that's actually a marine protected area. And then the second one is San Isidro in Davao, Davao Oriental, which is a non-marine non protected area. So if you can see from the map, your uh, point of reference could be the island garden city of Sama. So Mabini is uh, at the upper uh, upper direction from the island garden city of Samal where San Isidro is in the lower part. Now, uh, we collected uh, our data from both these sites in Mabini, which is uh, a Naipas area. And uh, the, the, the MPAs, uh, we call it locally as the uh, Naipas in, in the Philippines. And there were 210 households that were interviewed in the Naipas areas. And in San Isidro, which is a non-Naipas, we, we also interviewed 196. So overall, we have a total of 406 samples. And this uh, the production, production performance was uh, during the Northeast Monsoon. And the survey period was during the 2018 to 2019. Uh, time period. So the production function that we use is the uh, log of catch, which is a function of your, the log of the effort hours and the log of the boat length and the log of the input cost and the log of other cost. And uh, more importantly, the dummy variable for the boat type, which is a either motorized or non-motorized boat. So our dependent variable is the fish catch level and our independent variables are the effort hours, both length uh, input costs, other costs, and both types. So we, we employed both the ordinary least squares and the quantile regression at 0 0.25, 0 0.50, and 0 0.75 uh, quantiles. So our goal with using the quantile regression was to look at the effect of these variables as to the level of catches improved. So at 0 0.25, that's, uh, that's the lower catch level. And then at 0 0.75, that's the higher catch level. So the full description of our variables are here. So we also use the information on the CPUE, which is measured in terms of kilogram per hour or the catch per unit effort. And then our output is the catch, which is measured in terms of kilogram per week. And then our uh, inputs as mentioned are effort hours measured in hours per week, the both length uh, measured in feet, and the input cost, uh, peso per week, other cost, peso per week, and the boat type, which is a dummy variable uh, with values one if it is motorized and zero if it is otherwise. Now for the descriptive statistics, as we can see here, uh, this is the statistics com comparing the NIPAS and non-NIPAS area. So we have here the mean and the standard deviations. So as we look at it for the CPUE, we have higher 
higher CPU level at the non-NIPAS area compared to NIPAS. And then we have also our information on catch, which is at 66 kilogram per week versus 105 and the inputs as well. So now this is the graph of the NIPAS versus non-NIPAS areas. As you can see here, uh, there were more non-motorized uh, uh, boats in the NIPAS areas. And uh, as you can see that the, there's a, a big difference in terms of their catch level or the CPU, which is measured in kilogram per hour. So now we, we model this, uh, this uh, uh, function using uh, ordinary least squares and uh, quantile regression. And as you can see here, I, I would like to highlight the boat type, which is the, real, the focus of the study. It was significant using the ordinary least squares and as well as significant for the 50th and the 75th quantile in the NIPAS areas. But in the non-NIPAS area, we found that uh, the use of motorized vehicle is not significant. So, so our discussion about this one is that the boat type is actually significant in the 50th and 75th quantiles. And then compared to non-motorized boats, those fishers with motorized boats have actually higher catch by about 103%. And we found that there was high correlation of motor engines uh, with choice of fishing based on the literature. And because there's restriction of the fishing gears and motorized boats in NIPAS areas, um, we expect this result. And uh, there is an increased fish abundance actually in the boundary of MPA areas. So our, our recommendation is that during the, uh, especially during the closed season, uh, there might be a need to shift to tourism-based services using non-motorized boats. And then if we are to use motorized boats, uh, we need to use electric boats and biodiesel. So I think uh, that's, that's the key, uh, uh, key results in our study. And uh, so that's the, that's the conclusion part, uh, which says that the all inputs are significant drivers in NIPAS. But in a NIPAS, there are uh, selected uh, variables like in effort, input cost, and other costs. And more importantly, uh, motorized boats increased fish catch in, non non in NIPAS areas and it's significant in upper quantiles. So I'd like to acknowledge the Dare to Beam CHAD project and the in house research funding from the uh, Center for the Advancement, Research, Development, and Engagement in Mindanao or Karim, the Municipal Agricultural Offices of the LGUs of Mabini and San Isidro, and of course our fisher respondents in Mabini and San Isidro. And these are my our references. Uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you very much, JM. Uh, there's a question for you. <laughs> It's from Dr. Campos. So the question is, are the features in NIPAS versus NIPAS areas similar in your study? Sorry, sorry, certain I did not catch the first part. Our fish. Can you check the Q&A? Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Okay. Did you get it? Are the fishing gear types used in NIPAS versus non-NIPAS areas similar in your study? Uh, uh, Sir Wilfred, we actually have the information in the fishing gears, but we have not included it in the model. But uh, if, if I may recall, there are actually uh, various fishing gears uh, used in both areas in non and NIPAS and non NIPAS. And I, I think we have to account for this one to really uh, check the the differences of these gears. But uh, yes, we have this information here, Wilfred, and uh, we'll probably uh, in the revised manuscript of our uh, output, we might need to uh, include this information because this is, this is really crucial, so. There's one more question from so the, the, Mom the, boat, the boat should be measured in meters because uh, it's metric. Uh, yes, Mom Georgine. So, so definitely we will uh, revise it uh, from feet. We will uh, we will translate it into metrics. Uh, 
So you will convert in meters. it. Con- not convert it. Convert uh, sorry, it. convert it into meters. Can I have a quick uh, second question thing, no? Yung ano lang yung you, it doesn't matter kung motorized or not in non-MPAs, but it does in MPAs. Uh, could you correlate this with the, ano, kasi theoretically sa MPAs, mas healthy ang fish stock. So, there's more fish to catch. And so, uh, ano, uh, so do you have any um, um, related literature to, to, to support this? And more importantly, I think ang underlying prob- problem you're addressing is yung decline in municipal fisheries, no? Yung the, the poor fisher folk. Yes, ma'am. And um, ang question ko, itong information nyo, no? This is very useful. Is this getting to the uh, fisheries curriculum? Uh, kasi um, I know si, ano, si Willie Campus is there, maybe other fisheries faculty are, are listening. Pero ako, I come from the other end of this, no? from the habitat end, the mangroves. Ang curriculum kasi sa fisheries, mga how to improve fishing gear, fishing catches, like this. Wala na yung fish. Wala nga ano, how to improve the habitats, yung mga gano'n. No? So, um, ang sa akin lang, there's a lot of information, but the curriculum, fisheries curriculum has to be updated no? to 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 uh, incorporate all this new information para hindi naman sayang. So thank you for your uh, presentation. Thank you, Ma'am Georgine. So yes, that's a very good uh, suggestion from Ma'am Georgine to uh, really uh, get these findings uh, uh, reach the 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 stakeholders, especially the ones that will uh, design the curriculum uh, for 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 this uh, area. So thank you, thank you for that, Ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we are not yet aware of the. I'm part author of the paper. Uh, we are not aware yet if the. Uh, 